Hey friends, I'm the guy from Secret Base Design who does all the app coding, and I've got an update to one of our apps, Mini Morphosis, that's about to go out. Uh, we're putting this out for beta tests, so it's going to be open beta. If you want to give it a spin and help us debug it and make sure everything works as expected, I appreciate your help. Um, you can drop me an email at apps at secretbasedesign.com, and I'd be happy to hook you up. Uh, to give you an idea of what the app does and where I'm going with this, um, a zillion years ago, I was in a guitar shop and I got to play with a Roland GR early, early guitar synth, one of the Stone Age ones. Um, the guitar was really nice. Sort of had a Gibson SG body, played great, and then you kick the switches on this like blue synthesizer box that then was connected to it, and it sounded amazing. Organs and all sorts of synth, synth noises, just totally cool. Um, wanted it bad, but like not $5,000 bad. So it's just sort of been prickling in the back of my brain. And then with the iPhone, it became clear that you could do signal processing. You've probably got a tuner app on your phone already. And so the idea is listen to the guitar, your phone, do the signal processing, figure out what notes are being played, then hook that up to MIDI and control a synth. Um, first version of this app went out into the App Store like 11 years ago, so I've been tinkering on it for a long time. I got a whole bunch new that I'm going to walk you through in this video so you know what to test and what to look for. All right, so let's dive in. All right, so let's dive in, and my cat's gonna help me put together this video. So you've probably got an app on your phone to tune your guitar, and you know how this works. Guitar, going into a audio interface. In this case, I've got a Focusrite iTrack dock. Yes, kitty cat. Um, that runs into my iPad, and so what's happening is the app is listening to the tone out coming off the guitar, figuring the pre frequency like a tuner would, and showing up on screen. So let me do this. Guitar is basically in tune. Did that before everything started up. And like a tuner app. What you'll see here on this display, it's analyzing all the frequencies of the incoming note. So we're doing a fast Fourier transform and pulling up all the frequencies. This gives us faster pitch detection and also more accurate. What we can do this with this is then convert this into a MIDI note and send it off to a synthesizer. The app has a built-in sound font player, so we'll turn on Generation MIDI. Pretty straightforward, right? Um, fast enough, so if you're going to be blazing speed daemon, probably not going to be able to keep up. But if you play slow and clean, easy to get notes into, into the guitar. Uh, latency is all a concern, so I'm going to talk about that a little bit more and about one of the things that made us take a sort of right turn in the direction of the app. I'll get into that a little bit later. Now you've got the internal sound font, which is pretty generic. Let's switch this over. I'm going to turn off the internal synth. And you can send MIDI to wherever you want to send it. Uh, I'm going to, I've got Animog running in the background here. A uh, great app from Monk Music. So let's turn on analog. And now again, generic guitar, couple of markers, and synth. That's sort of the fun that I had a zillion years ago with the Roland GR synth back in the day. But again, any guitar, any pickup combination you want should work. All right, so let me talk a little bit about sort of right turn we took with this app a few years ago. Uh, you're analyzing sound coming in off the guitar. There's always gonna be a little bit of latency between what you hit on the guitar and when the MIDI note can be triggered. The app's gotta to listen to a little bit to figure out the pitch. And so there's always latency, even with the hardware, your Rollins, your GRs, whatever's, your Fishman AAAs, and it annoyed the hell out of me. Um, we're not gonna get it down to zero, that's just the physics of the situation. So we went on a little bit of a right-hand turn of where we could go with the app. And so what's been built in, in the last couple of years is actually tablature. Um, if you play guitar, chances are you play read tab, and if not, uh, I don't want to hear about it. Um, I read tab. 
That's how I learn things. And so if I'm noodling around and I come up with a riff or I figure off something off a record, I'd want to write it down, but I'm lazy and it disappears and then I come back a day later and I can't figure it out. So let me show you what you can do with this app. It's got a built-in MIDI recorder. And so it can record what you're playing on your app or playing on your guitar. And so let's, uh, let's record something. I'll turn on record up here. Now what's going to happen is I'm going to play a note on the guitar in the pitch detection on the app and turn it into a note. And so you see the notes coming in here on the left hand side of the screen. And if you're playing up on somewhere here, I'll switch over to say fifth position. And it records back all the notes that I'm playing. And now I've got it in here, recorded. If you're playing something that's uh, tricky rhythmically, and you got to get the timing exactly right, you're gonna have a hell of a hard time doing it on any MIDI guitar. There's a little bit of latency, a little bit of uh, lag, a little bit of jitter, and you're probably not gonna get the feel right. So what we've done here is I've added this tap button in the lower right-hand corner. It will play back the music from the transcription one tap at a time, so you can use the tap button to get the rhythm right. So the idea is if you're putting this into some sort of uh, tablature app, um, uh, Music Pro, Logic Pro, wherever your mind seems to go, you can get the notes right, just play it off the guitar, and then send it over to the DAW or whatever tab app you want and get the timing fixed up there. So this is the main app. And one of the new things is we've also got an AUV3. And so I'm going to dive into that in the next part of this video. Actually, let me do a little bit more on the user interface from the main app first. Here on the main screen, you can see this frequency spectrum. I'm just using the built-in microphone. And it's picking up the sound of my voice. You can see the pitch showing up. And if you do something like whistle, you'll see it fairly clearly. So here we go. The tone of a whistle is really just one sort of frequency, and so that's why you see only one bubble. Um, as you've got an instrument like a that has a string, there's multiple frequencies that are all harmonic, and so you can sort of see this. If uh, I'm going to punish you with a little bit of singing, uh, 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 you can see multiple spots up. Um, if you've ever wondered why we have 12 notes in the scale and stuff like that, uh, app may clue you in on a little bit of this. But let me show you the the tablature editing part of it. So switch over here to tab. I'll create a fresh, fresh sheet there for you. All right, I've got record turned on. And so MIDI notes that come in, either detected from the guitar or from an external keyboard or from this fretboard that we've got down here at the bottom of the screen, will get recorded. And so let me do a few chords here. I'm just going to tap them on the screen and get it in that way. D chord there. And uh, uh, let's do a G. Tablet chord there. The app gives you lots of ways to edit tablature. So you can select a bunch of things. Double tap, we'll turn it into a chord. Double tap again, expands back out. Select a group of notes. And there's copy paste. Here's a copy and paste. So I can duplicate. So if I've got a riff that I want to do multiple times, make copies of it. And if I want to move some notes around, for instance, this uh, three up on the high E, touch and drag, move it to wherever you want. If you need to change the pitch, right now, this thing will toggle between changing the pitch and note. So sliding up and down changes the pitch. And I can change the string as well. And you can do this for groups of notes. So 
The idea is a, you might have a song, you might be transcribing something, uh, working on some riffs, and so you might have multiple riffs collected together in one big song. And uh, this lets you edit easily, keep track of what you've got, move it around, and if you've figured out something on guitar, uh, you don't lose it. There's a number of export options here. I'll show a little bit more on it in a bit, but Let's go over here. This one, you can export as a single channel MIDI file, all the notes mapped onto single one just MIDI, uh, MIDI channel one. The multi-channel MIDI map will send out all the notes uh, where each string gets a different MIDI channel. And so this is useful if you're importing to something like Logic Pro. There's also Music XML. And so Guitar Pro from Adorbis uh, speaks um, Music XML. A couple other ways to export. You can export the original MIDI Morphosis file, so you can import it to another device, or you can export as a PDF and just print the PDF of getting your transcription. So all this is built into the app. Um, pretty useful. I'm not sure if I've seen an app out there that does the same sorts of things. In terms of connecting to the outside world, well, there's internal presets, so all sorts of sounds that are built into the app for you to play with if you're using the internal synth. You can also send out to one or more MIDI devices or to over Bluetooth somewhere else. So Bluetooth is supported. Audio channel, you can choose whether it's a left or right audio channel if you've got a dual channel input. Toggle on off if you run in the background. And there's a tracking speed. The faster the tracking, the more likely you are to get a good glitch. So if you're just playing live and noodling around, such as low tracking accuracy, it's very quick and responsive. If you're recording, move to higher, get fewer missed notes. If you've got a bass guitar, uh, let's create a new song. We can adjust the tuning. So the app supports up to eight different strings, but let's make it a bass, down to four strings. The low E on a guitar is usually MIDI 40. If uh, the low E on a bass is 28, so let's knock this down to 28. And now we've got it set up for bass guitar. The app works fine and will record in bass. And you can see four strings and everything you expect off the guitar. All right, now let me jump over and talk about the AUV3 finally. All right, so next up, let's jump into what's going on with the AUV3 plugin. Um, one thing that Apple has done the last couple of years is improve their audio processing pipeline, uh, giving new features. AUV3 seems to be the standard they're going with for plugin devices. And so MIDI Morphosis is now a AUV3 plugin. Let me quick and close these guys up so you can see. All right, so what I've got here is AUM from Chimatica, a really great audio unit host. Uh, a couple of synths here. I've got Animog Z on an audio track over on the right hand side. Uh, Poison from Jim Audio uh, down here, really nice, uh, simple, classic sounding synth. My guitar amp simulator of choice. Really big fan of DB Audio Ears. 20th anniversary app. This was uh, known as Flying Haggis a few years ago. Um, sort of got a classic uh, 70s, 80s rock guitar sound, uh, which I'm partial to. And you'll note I've got the Minimorphosis AU3 plugin. So what's happening is audio is coming through channel here, left input on my iFact dock, hits Minimorphosis first and then gets passed through to the DB AudioWare uh, 20th Century Amp Simulator. Let me turn off MIDI for a second, turn audio, so just straight for a guitar. And humbuckers. Picking up sound coming off my guitar and running through. I'm gonna turn off the audio pass through so it's going to silence the guitar. And so uh, 
gives you an easy way to toggle between using a synth and using guitar tone. And let me turn on MIDI. The way it's configured right now, I'm sending out MIDI notes from the AUV3 of MIDI Morphosis. And the routing is as follows. You can see MIDI Morphosis sending notes to both Poison and to Animoke. And I've got Poison on channel 4, Animoke on channel 5. So let's, uh, let's, go, let's go Poison first. Easy peasy. Uh, I want to switch over to analog, just change the output channel. Not that. One thing we've added in is support for external MIDI controllers. So what you're seeing down here. This is the FCB 1010. It's my uh, guitar MIDI effects pedal, pedal board thing. And I've got it programmed to send MIDI notes. MIDI Morphosis responds to a bunch of channel messages. You can toggle on and off audio processing, pitch detection. And there are a few things that support uh, the editing in the main app that I'll show you in a moment. But MIDI channel one toggles on and off MIDI processing. So if you want to turn on or turn off MIDI, put pedal. Two, we'll turn off on and off the audio pass through. So right now passing through. Back off. We got pedal set up. You can turn off both sign the same sign thing. So it's actually program change zero, program change one, program change two. We'll toggle both of them and the same go. And so if you're playing and doing something, you want to turn on synth, you can do that. Turn one or off any combination you want. Um, to give you an idea of the latency, I'm going to turn on both the synth, and it's probably easier to hear with poison. It's got a much sharper attack. And then I will turn on audio as well, so you can hear both the guitar and the synth together. I've got tracking speed set to moderate. It's going to give you a little bit more latency, but more accurate tracking. If you're not worried about glitches and a little bit of stray notes, you can a little bit faster. If you're interested in having no missed notes, but you can tolerate a little bit more latency. And this is, uh, again, sort of what we were thinking when we were thinking record and be able to edit the transcriptions. You can hear a little bit higher latency between the MIDI note and the guitar itself. Um, but fewer missed notes, fewer glitches. Anyway, that's a quick overview of what's coming out with MIDI Morphosis 2. Again, it's an open beta. If you want to give it a spin, just drop me an email, apps at secretbasedesign.com, and we can hook you up. Uh, hoping to release this probably early February of this year. Uh, probably be on sale when it goes out. Um, let me know what you think, and I appreciate your feedback.